I'm Derek Joyce and I'm here with Paul Omwerda and this is I'm Not The Expert But. This is a podcast where we'll discuss everything from the most complex ideas that we know nothing about to the simplest ideas that we probably know nothing about either. So put the kettle on, get comfy and join us. An unbelievably simple, unsciencey look at DNA. Okay. That's what I'm thinking about. I had a look at it and I skipped over loads of it because it's just, I'm not smart enough yeah. to be able to no, drill no, down to it. And when you yeah. drill down to something and then there's more to it and there's more mm-hmm. and even more, I was like, oh, for fuck's sake. Yeah. Um, but I was thinking because, because everything evolved on this planet. Mm. And whether you believe in a creationist God or evolution, it doesn't matter. It was all on this planet. So it stands to reason that we all share the same genes, same kinds of genes. We're all carbon-based life forms. Carbon-based life forms, carbon-based food, carbon-based fucking ground trees, everything, right? The entire biosphere is carbon-based. Everything, right? So I figured there has to be some kind of similarities in our DNA. And I didn't think this last week while I was thinking, Jesus, what did I talk about in the podcast? I thought this years ago. Right. I was in the staff room in school ages ago and I'd found this on the day I wasn't there. Then I brought it in and I was telling one of the teachers beside me, we were just talking. Yeah. And one of the other teachers sitting on the other table, like halfway down the room, overheard us and he was saying to me, where, where are you getting this stuff? <laughs> and I was like, this, it interests me. And the more I looked into it, the more interesting it was because I was telling them how genetically similar to bananas that people are. <laughs> bananas. Bananas. And I'll get there. <laughs> That's bananas. I'll get there. But he was saying, that it's, it's astonishing. I was, yeah. so I, I looked into DNA anyway. And right, okay. Now I'd, I'd have... You know, I wouldn't have a massive understanding. Good. Like yourself. Because I don't, and that means you can't show me up. Well, <laughs> I, I wasn't finished, Del. Oh, shit. <laughs> a lot of the fiction, now just bear in mind, fiction that I read is based around kind of near future, genetic modification, tired science fiction as well. Okay. So I'd have a bit of an understanding of what's going on with proteins and you know ctg uh, which i will get to and explain later you know, so just yeah no so just cards on the table yeah. i do know a little bit about this subject so i'm gonna keep okay. you honest i'm going nowhere near genetically modified anything because right, i okay. know nothing about right, it. anyway the genes in your body carry info that determines what features or characteristics are passed on to you by your man da? Yeah. Right? Yeah. So everybody knows that you're made up of 50%. your mom and your dad's DNA. Yeah. Okay? Each cell in your body contains about 25,000 to 35,000 genes. So each cell, yeah. tiny, intangible yeah. thing, the things that separate mitosis, you know, the way they, they yeah. separate? And, yeah. 25 to 35,000 genes. In every one of those cells. In the nucleus of every one of those cells. Yeah, well, there's very little sir, in, the, in the surrounding areas. Yeah, like, that's where all the information... Membrane and yeah. stuff, yeah, yeah. Well, it's the, the electron and the proton and the stuff like that. So yeah. the nucleus is what contains all the information, is my understanding. And if there's a scientist listening <laughs> and I'm way off track, please get in touch and tell me. Yeah, I, okay. I can't keep you honest on that one. Okay, no, no. well, that's just what I've read and somebody could have written that and they wanted, yeah. but I try to stay to scientific articles. So chromosomes, and we do, I don't go much into this because I know nothing about it and it just started to give me a headache when I was looking it up. Yeah. Chromosomes are thread-like structures of genes inside cells that pass down info through generations. You've got 25 to 35,000 genes. Yeah. They're all the contained within a thread-like structure mm. in your genes, right? So they're not just free, free floating around. Yeah, yeah they're, they're, they're in thread-like structures. Yeah. DNA is in every living thing. 
every living thing on the planet and the biosphere, as we said at the start, yeah. except rocks. Rocks aren't alive, to the best of my knowledge. Now, it could, be, it could be that rocks contain a fossil that a scientist might be able to collect DNA from. Yeah, but so the rock that, itself... But the rock, so I, in most situations... Is rock the only thing on the planet that isn't... Well, living? a rock is, yeah. what is it? Sedimentary, metamorphic... And igneous rocks. The igneous, yeah, yeah, very good. There yeah, you go. Yeah. I remember my geography. They're all just, aren't they composites of something else? Like, so igneous ignition, I always talked about. So is that volcanic? It is, yeah. 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 I think you're, it's a long time since I yeah. was in geography. <laughs> I didn't even look I used to be it. mad into geology, like when I was in school, but geez, I haven't thought about it. No, dogs. me either. And, and sedimentary funny. is is yeah. what it sounds like. Yeah. It's compacted sediment. Yeah, it's yeah, what's yeah, fallen. Yeah. Yeah. And then metamorphic is whatever the fuck that is. Well, it obviously changes. Yeah. So it's metamorphous. Yeah, there yeah, you go. Yeah, so it's torn from something else into rock, basically. Yeah. And that's compression. Yeah. Yeah. So, so rocks don't contain DNA unless there's a DNA. Giving a fossil foreign DNA coming in from fossil in yeah. that rock. Yeah. Okay. Nucleotides, and this is where you get your A C T G. Yeah, yeah. Nucleotides is an organic molecule, and DNA contains four nucleotides. So yes. there's a, a chromosome, which is the thread-like structure, that contains DNA. DNA contains nucleotides. The ACTG, and I'll get down to what ACTG yeah. is in a minute, to the best of my knowledge. Okay, so I still could be wrong. Again, Mr. Scientist or Miss Scientist, if you're listening, get in touch and correct me. I have a little bit on that as well. Okay, do you want to go on? Let me tell you what nucleotides are first. So ATCG is adenosine A, thymine T, yeah. cytosine C, yeah. and guanine yeah. G and they can they can be in any combination yeah. of that within the, yeah. and the thread like structure, of, which is your double helix. Yeah. Do you know what each of those nucleotides is made up of? No. This this is where I was struggling when you were telling me about it the other day, Dal. I was trying to work like, I'm still struggling. Trying to get it into my head. They're basically a chemical compound which is a base, a sugar with five electrodes. Okay. And a phosphate, which is like like a salt from phosphorus acid. Okay. So that's your chemical compound. So that's the base. That's yeah. everyone's basic everything. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Okay, fair enough. Okay. This is basically going to be a list. Like I've gotten through all the sciencey stuff that I'm even remotely going to go near. Right, okay. Okay. Your DNA is 99% similar to the person next to you. Yeah even if that person is a stranger. So if you're sitting yeah. on the bus listening to this in your AirPods, mm. the person sitting next to you on the seat, if there's one there, or even yeah. the driver driving the bus, is 99% similar to you DNA. Yeah, so okay? like it, if we're talking like using DNA to confirm parenthood, paternity or whatever, yeah, mm -hmm. or to catch a criminal, what they're dealing with is it is similarities or differences of tiny fractions of a percentage that make an individual person like an individual like your dna i just said your dna my dna are one percent difference your dna and your brother's dna is one less than down it'll be less than one percent different because i don't know that for yeah, a fact yeah. and i don't not know that for a fact yeah yeah that's pretty much how it works yeah as far as I'm the fact that I know is your DNA is 99% similar to the person next to you. That's good enough yeah, for me. Even if they're a stranger. Yeah. 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 The other 1% gives you your eye color, yeah. gives you your hair color, your freckles, or your skin color, or whatever it yeah. may be, or how predisposed to disease you might be. Yeah. Because some people get lots of diseases throughout their life, and some people don't get any. Um, that one percent is the explanation. Yeah. Maybe they can. Maybe they can now explain that's what it medically. I meant, but yeah. But I don't, yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's the one percent that is compared between you and your potential father, shall we say? Yeah, 
My potential uh, father. That was my potential <laughs> no, father was my fucking father. I'm just saying, if you're a baby and they're, they're trying to discern... Okay, the so it's a potential it's suit situation. One, yes, right. okay. it's that 1%. Yeah, I thought you were saying something about my mom. That is compared between the baby and off. its potential yeah, father. Okay. And it's, yeah, so it is the similarities in that 1% because the other 99% is identical. Anyway. Okay, so wind in the fist, you're not getting a box in the nose. No, no, okay, no your dad enough. was very much your dad. No. Okay. <laughs> Now, other stuff that we're similar to, this is stupid interesting. Okay. This just had me going for ages and I was just opening up tab after tab right, okay, after well, tab on my comp go computer. Notes now with the list. No, it's there's lots of it, but there's I've got very little to no explanation for any of it. Okay. So I'm not going in depth. I just found it really interesting. Okay. We're 99% similar to chimps. Yeah, I've heard that. Okay. Didn't some food company or something use that as an advertising slogan? I don't know. Not that long ago, yeah. I just, just remember on bus stops. I can't remember who it was. Maybe I don't know, and I don't remember ever seeing it on bus stops. Yeah, yeah. But I, I do know... Yeah. Um, I'll look it up later. There's people that give out... If, if we're descended from chimps, how come there are still fucking chimps? Or, no. I'm not descended from any fucking monkey. Yeah, yeah. It, you're it's not... No, no, you're not des descended from a chimp. We didn't evolve from chimps. No. But we do share a, a common, common ancestor, ancestor a couple of hundred thousand years on ago. Different, yeah. On different branches of the tree. So, yeah, so yeah. that argument is... That's a moot point. That's, oh, totally. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's basic science. Cats... We're ninety percent genetically similar to cats. Okay, wow. Yeah, so if someone says they're a cat person, they might be more to it than that. <laughs> well, they're ninety percent. Well, right we all anyway. are. We all are. <laughs> yeah, they're yeah. ninety percent right. Mice okay. are about eighty-five percent similar, according to according to National Human Research Institute. They attribute this to a shared ancestor about eighty million years ago. Okay, that stands to reason, and I, I'm actually surprised in some ways that it's so low as 80 percent because if you think about it what do they use in labs to test yeah cosmetics and all that kind of shit they grew well a, they do rabbits yeah. well they grew that's it they grew an ear yeah, on a mouse on a on mouse back back. Of, and yeah. as well you'll remember back to our very first episode del trey brain trey brain yeah. was grown from mouse neurons was uh, it yeah that's mouse what, neurons yeah, yeah. Yeah, so there you go. Eighty percent. I thought that was pretty high. Yeah, it is. But if you Except consider ninety percent a cat, eighty-five percent. So I'd imagine ninety percent. You're right. Ninety yeah, percent cat. So I would imagine it's probably scientifically more efficient to do all that testing on cats. Except we love cats. People love cats. Yeah, was it an and ethical, they moral thing? Probably wouldn't have got yeah. away with using cats. Yeah. in a lab. Yeah, yeah, who gives a fuck about mice? Yeah, yeah. exactly. There yeah. you have it. I so give, 85% I give mice. a fuck about mice now. Free the mice. Cattle share 80% of their genes with us. Okay. Which is nuts. It, it, it is nuts, you know, but when it's you not actually nuts. think yeah, yeah. about it though, right? And like, think about any animal, right? And I mean, what I always say, it's very easy for us to kind of see an animal walk around on its four legs and it's t it's so different to us stand it up on its back legs now skeletally i mean right yeah. take its skeleton stand it up on its four legs and you've got in, mo in a lot of animals you've got a lot of similarities okay knees are usually backwards that's well one. well you Massive see difference. you're t i'm thinking of the hind quarters of i'm talking about cows now yeah. so i'm thinking of those hind quarters their yeah. knees are not backwards. The knees are pointed in the right direction. Oh, so yeah, if you okay, think about yeah. if you think about its hind quarters, it goes from the thigh down to the knee, yeah. down to the ankle. Mm. And but I'm thinking on, higher up, okay. So, if, so you have pelvis, spine, yeah, rib yeah, yeah. cage. But but everything's got a rib cage. But but the knee is not backwards. No, it's not. The knee is, yeah, no, the knee is backwards on a flamingo. I yeah. think it, I think it's a flamingo anyway. Yeah. yeah. And horses. Cause horses, the elbow goes. No, away. but they've got the same thing. Like, but but what you were thinking of is the elbow at the back is the wrist. Mm, yeah, but I, I would be thinking the front legs would be the arms more so. If you stood it up, I'm saying. 
just put it on a tiny legs. Okay, well, sorry, not the wrist, but what you're thinking of in the hind legs is the ankle. That's not the elbow yeah, pointing out the yeah, back. Yeah, yeah, sorry, yeah. So, you know, yeah. um, actually, just interestingly, how many legs has an elephant got? Four. Two. 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 Its front two are actually arms. Okay. It works, walks, yes, it walks on all four, but they're effectively, they're, they're apparently their arms. Yeah, no, that kind of makes... Now, this is completely not scientific. I saw. So I'm just thinking. I seen elephants in the circus oh, many years ago when it was allowed. Now they'd have them standing up on their hind legs. The front legs do kind of move more, like arms than. Well, apparently, yeah. I was watching a show and the host had held up a picture of an elephant, a silhouette of an elephant. Right. And said, you all have one of these under your desk. And they all pulled it out and they all held it on the desk. And he said, on your desk, you've got a tray of little red stickers. And he said, stick the stickers mm. on where you think the elephant's knees are. And they all stuck it on the where you would think the knees are. And the only correct answer was the two back legs. The two yeah. front, it didn't have knees on its front legs because yeah. they were effectively arms. Ar evolutionarily elbows. arms or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Elbows. Wow. Okay. Yeah, so that's the only reason I know that. That's nice. And there's an, it, it's like, it's about the size of, again, a small dog. It's called a rock hyrax. Okay. So go and Google a rock hyrax. H-Y-R-A-X. Okay. Rock hyrax. Rock hyrax, yeah. They are related to elephants. Okay. They're the size of small dogs. Right. And, you know, do they bear any kind of resemblance to an elephant? Nothing. Or? They look like, they look yeah. like a large Describe rat it. without a tail. Oh, I know the thing you're the talking fucking... about. Yeah, they have them in the zoo, Yeah, actually. they're very yeah. not elephants. Yeah. yeah it's wow. nuts. But yeah, so I was in South Africa um, ages ago, yeah. like a lifetime ago. And but you're still talking about it. This is the second I love podcast. It. Yeah, come here, listen, absolutely. Big South rock, Africa is rock. amazing, people. You should go there and mm -hmm. give them all your money because they have fucking nothing. Mm -hmm. The guy who was taking us out on our tour, and we were doing well watching, and elephants were out, and you could see them 50 or 100 yards yeah. away, whatever. And he said, See those elephants there? In his elephants are my favorite African animal, ad. by the way. Yeah. Just I, I sponsor, I adopted two elephants. Cool. Yeah, that, they live in Kenya. Would you not bring them home, for God's sake? No, fucking to this country. <laughs> yeah, no, true, no. But yeah, I adopted two elephants. Deadly, deadly. Yeah, Varty no, and Lamiki. Yeah, no, it was just years ago I done a, a course in, it was art and mural design, oh, way back. And we spent six weeks in the zoo, drawing animals for, uh, they were building the new part of the zoo at the time, and we done all the signage. And the ones that I done, like, you know, when you go to the, enclosure and there's a bit of information about the animal and there's usually a drawing of the animal yep i drew the elephant that and the white rhino oh wow for those signs yeah that, that, that was pretty That's cool claim to fame. Uh, yeah. yeah it was they've been changed since That's i was about to say they've probably been changed ago, but they were there for a two long three or four times yeah, but yeah they were there good. for a long long well time done. but it was during that kind of six to eight weeks that we were there that i realized just how much i loved elephants i spent days oh they're deadly they is drawing the elephants, but just they're so, they're something so big and cumbersome looking. They're so graceful. They're just so, so graceful and they're just beautiful. Yeah, they just, I love them. Yeah, yeah I love elephants. They're so elephants. caring and loving to each other and you can just see That's why like, I, lo yeah. I love all animals. Like mm. I do. That's just, but I adopted two elephants because mm, cool. I specific, and I want to, I, when, and if I mean, and yeah, when I retire, I love. They'll be hunted to exist. Extinction as well. Well, no, this is this an stuff. elephant refuge, yeah. so they're Class, taking yeah. orphans uh, and they yeah. raise them. That's and actually, terrible. when I adopted the latest one, I adopted, mm. they brought in another one called Dol Dol D O L D O L, mm. and it was premature. Aww. And they found it. A, a tribesman in a nearby village found it one night after the mother had given birth and she'd bolted she'd been scared by by yeah. some lines on the hunt or, maybe or... Or, or poachers or hyenas or whatever yeah. and he took it into his hut for the night just yeah. to so it'd live and they got in touch with the wildlife service after and they went out and they saw it and the 
the article on it says it's impossibly small. It was impossibly small. So they had, that it, they, they didn't, they didn't think it last. No, yeah, they didn't yeah. think it lasted a day. So they put their head keeper on it, and he's the winner, and it's still alive. Ah, it's so and it's still cool. tiny, but yeah. it's it's, oh, it's cool. super small, but it's yeah. it's alive and it's it's. Oh, that's class. Yeah. Now, um, so that's the one I wanted to adopt, but I can't afford to adopt three. Yeah. No, no. But I'm going to. But uh, fair, fair play. And the, <laughs> the thing with those things is, is well, and not that it matters. It's actually you know. It only makes sense for them to do this. When you adopt an elephant, I'm assuming other people have also adopted the Hundreds same. of thousands of people yeah. own, adopted, the same adopted elephants. my elephants, yeah, which is, yeah, yeah. it's my claim. I know it's nice to think of it no, as being yours. No, but, I, yeah. was, I, it I adopted it and I adopted it and I got that, you know, the obligatory email that you get, congratulations, joining our family. Yeah. And the one thing I took from it was that there are tens of thousands and hopefully hundreds of thousands, thousands of, of people, people have adopted the same elephant because that means they're getting more money. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And the more they get, the better. Yeah. So I'm perfectly yeah. happy with the idea that thousands yeah. of people own the elephants I adopted. Yeah. No, I, think I remember it like oh, it's gone back a good few years ago now. My mother-in-law purchased a goat for a family in I'm going to say Sierra Leone or somewhere for the kids for Christmas. Right now the kids were like, "You, you did what?" Well, you know, where's my present? Yeah. Right? So when the kids sat down and thought about it, and we talked about it, you know, we explained it to them, you know, that this is a family with nothing. They have nothing. They now have a source of milk, of cheese, you know, of life. You know, this, yeah. this will support them. They can sell the milk for money. They can get other stuff. Once they kind of understood that, like, yeah. you know, this was a... The knock-on effect is huge. It was like giving you know, a job to a family, to that, you know, it's a way of earning money as not just of getting milk and cheese yeah. from it. Existence as opposed yeah. to subsistence. Exactly. And, and they might not, the family now, might not have the best of existence, but they're, no. uh, they're a step better than yeah. if they were. Than they were before, yeah. before yeah. my mother and I bought that goat. So yeah, no, I thought it was lovely. Yeah. I thought it was a really nice thing to do. It's something I want. I must look into myself into doing something similar yeah. because it is. My, my brother um, adopts snow leopards and fucking orangutans and <laughs> mountain gorillas and yeah. all that kind of thing. And he gets the stuffed toy and gives it to his girlfriend. Oh, cool. Like, so, yeah. so it's not just me. Yeah. And I know, I know zoos come in for a lot of flack, right? You know, animals living in captivity and all, etc. But something I, I discovered again when I was in the zoo doing this bloody project is... The amount of conservation projects that they do, and there's a lot, like there's a lot more going on behind a zoo than what you see when you go to visit a zoo. Yeah, you know? I I do have problems with keeping animals I caged do. and all that kind of thing, yes, and I do, just but... I think about the polar bears that used to be in oh, the zoo, God, yeah. and that yeah, was destroyed me. Yeah. That was horrible. No, absolutely. So agree so, with you. so look, there are. There are some zoos around the world do nothing but ca oh, yeah. cause harm. Yeah. But and they're Dublin there. Now, they're not there for humanitarian purposes. No. They're there to exploit. Yeah. And I have a problem with that. Oh, so if the yeah. zoos do great work, if they do, fantastic. I'm all yeah. on board. Go yeah. for it. But I do not approve. Oh, yeah. I, mean, there's, I mean, look at Bloody Tiger King. I mean, you've got literally roadside zoos in America. Fucking you know? ridiculous. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Insane. But yeah, before I get back to sorry, before I get off. back to my list, go online, adopt an elephant or an orangutan or a snow leopard or a tiger. I don't care what it is. Adopt something. Okay. Where was it? Cattle, 80% of their genes. Okay, that's the weird. The article actually said domestic cattle. And I was thinking, are there undomesticated cattle? That I don't know about. Well, there is well, buffalo and stuff. Or, um, well, they're all bovine, um, so I suppose. Bison yeah, and yeah, stuff yeah. would have been kind of un undomesticated to an extent. I mean, uh, okay, well, they've they were been herded by Native Americans. Or yeah, whatever, they've been, but, and they were butchered by the yeah, white Americans. Only to, yeah, but that's yeah, that's yeah. Okay, better. so there are okay. So we are sixty-one percent similar to fruit flies. You know those little. I do. One to two millimeter fuckers that you, you yeah. swat away, the and they're like soot in the air. Yeah. 
Yeah. And they don't get the message. They the just kind of ride yeah. the turbulence and come back and yeah. piss you off again. Yeah. Those yeah. fellas were 61% similar to those things. That's nuts. This similarity mattered when NASA were investigating the effects of space flight before they sent a man into orbit. Right. So they sent them up to see they what... They used Yeah, well, they didn't know what, what the fuck wow. space flight was going to do. They so they... So, yeah. And... I mean, Poor they. Flyers. Yeah, fuck the flies. Yeah, like you know what? They're gonna live. What are they gonna live for? A month? There you have it, though. Like a week? Mice, you know. A day? Fuck the mice. 24 hours? What are those mayflies? Oh, yeah, you know those mayflies? Have, they like, drift uh, up they don't and have they. Much of a life yeah, anyway, they. Yeah. Well, but then how did they send. Okay, they obviously only sent flies into into orbit, then they didn't send them to the moon. Well, these it are. It takes days. No. What, it'd cost an awful lot of money to send a bunch of fruit flies to the moon. <laughs> yeah, and can yeah. you imagine trying to pass that through Congress? <laughs> Fucking hell. Yeah, that happened. Chickens are 60% similar to us. Okay. And yeah, that yeah. just blows my mind. Yeah. Again, though, that makes sense. Like, you know, as I was saying with the likes of cows and things, if you stand them on their back legs and structurally, skeletally, you can see it. Like, the boards are very different. So sixty percent makes kind of sense, yeah. Boards are descend are the descendants from dinosaurs. Yeah, yeah. So they're obviously they're going to be very different, yeah. yeah. And, and that's where I think you were thinking, you know, the the knee being backwards. Yeah. I think that's where it because they've got a pelvis that's reversed. Right. Okay. Like right. Right. So they're still be, the same structures, though. Basic structure. You know, so structurally, yeah, they're still the same. You know what I mean? It's everything, okay, other than invertebrates, and I'm sure they have a way different DNA percentage than us. Or maybe they don't. <laughs> maybe they don't. What a great <laughs> foreshadow. <laughs> Wait, I'll get there. <laughs> right, okay. Maybe they don't. But for me, that's what I'm thinking. Like, you know, vertebrates, whether they be mammalian or avian or, or whatever, still have the same kind of structure they've got they've got skeletons they've got muscles they've got skin they've got skulls brains you know there's rib cage yes pelvis thigh bones pelvis thighs rib yeah, cage yeah, 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 yeah. you know yeah. and that's an evolutionary thing as well like rib cage has evolved to protect the the internal organs ankles and, feet yeah i was watching planet earth there recently the old one david Attenborough from i don't know mid 90s maybe yeah but there's one species of sword bill hummingbird, right, has evolved in some jungle. I don't know where. I can't even remember. I just remember this one thing. The sword bill hummingbird is the only bird in in the whole of what's the word I'm looking for? Whole Animal species, kingdom. Whole kingdom. You know, bird kingdom. That its beak is longer than its body. Oh, I've seen that. Yeah, yeah. It right. evolves a longer beak to get into longer yeah. flowers. There you go. Yeah, yeah. When the nectar is deeper yeah, into yeah. the flower, that's the one. Yeah, and all the other birds have to kind of make do with yeah. fighting. Well, not fighting, but competing Fucking for the nectar. Birds, birds are ferocious, man. Yeah, yeah. No, that's, no but I mean competing for nectar from yeah. all of the other fauna, whereas this... Swordbill hummingbird has a whole species yeah. of flowers just to itself. Uh, it's I awesome. watched one of those Dave Attenborough things and there was the migration of a butterfly, a specific butterfly. Was, okay. And it was a lovely electric blue butterfly thing. Oh, yeah. But okay. it migrates from, I think it's the Texas, Arizona kind of area mm. down to Mexico and back again. Yeah. Like as it gets colder, it'll migrate south and then it'll come back yeah. north. And it takes three generations to get down and three back. Oh, that's mad. And the, the, the middle generation is going to spend its life traveling, not knowing why the fuck it's doing that. Yeah. And the sandwiching the first and third generations yeah. are going to leave a point and they're going to get to a point. But the middle generation yeah. isn't those, just spend its life anywhere. traveling. Yeah. Oh, that's mad. And I don't know what the name of the butterfly is, but it was it's nuts. It's like intergenerational yeah. space travel. Like, that's yeah, it was the nuts. thing that we're talking about. But yeah, they, yeah, so there you go. Wow. I mentioned bananas at the start of this. Yeah, yeah. 60% similarity to a banana. Humans' <laughs> genetic similarity to a banana is 60%. Yeah, it's that, nuts. That's <laughs> nuts. Humans and dogs are 94% genetic. Similarity. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Gorillas 
share 98.4% of their yeah, DNA with that humans. That absolutely makes sense. I mean, look at them. Yeah. They, ah, they're just grills out daily. They're our cousins, Love you know, them. Yeah. literally. You know, all the apes, Well, isn't there, know. there's gorilla, humans, bonobo, chimpanzee, yeah. and orangutan are the, the five great apes, yeah. aren't they? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, Neanderthals were 99.7% sim similar to humans. Right, okay, so Neanderthals technically then, I went, not even technically, specifically, are not human then, they're uh, an ancestor. Of you, of well, them. well, they're that's not, the thing. We're we're not descended from not Neanderthals. We're not descended from Neanderthal. We're not. No. Okay. We're we're Cro-Magnon. Right. So Neanderthals were stronger. Yeah. But Cro-Magnon man was smarter. Smarter. Okay. So Neanderthals were essentially a evolutionary dead end. They died off. Yes. Despite similarities that we shared with them, they were they were the guys with the heavy brow. Yeah, you know yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, despite yeah. similarities, they were not a step on the way to us. Right, okay. They were a dead end. Right, okay. They were a, a an evolutionary dead end offshoot that were never going to be us. Had they outlived Cro-Magnon man, mm. it'd just be a popular a planet populated with a different variation on Homo sapiens. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's what I, get, I get. Yeah, yeah. Now, physiologists have ascertained through, you know, DNA, not DNA, 3D modeling and computer modeling and all that kind of thing. They can approximate what they sounded like. Wow. Like, they can pretty much do for everything. Yeah. Like, yeah. there's, I saw a 3D, some guy blown into a 3D cast of a. Uh, a raptor larynx? No, you're thinking of one of the movies. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Of a, a whale. Oh, okay. And he was blown into, and it was making the noise of a whale. Oh, savage. I don't know whether it attracted whales or he communicated no, with them, yeah, and fuck knows what he would have been saying, but <laughs> it, it was a whale. But, okay, so they approximate the voices of Neanderthal. And wow. the Neanderthal had very nasally voices. Yes, yeah, because apparently. of that kind yeah, of. Yeah, yeah, but it was a very yeah. nasally, unlike us voice yeah. kind of thing you might meet someone who's very nasally but that's what they sounded really like more, more often than yeah, not yeah. and it was unlike the guttural grunts of cavemen which were Cro-Magnon which were us so you'd have the, the guttural grunt yeah. that they'd give out yeah. we're Cro-Magnon not the end okay well yeah. I've heard something there you today. go orangutans share 96 point 0.9% of their DNA does. Yeah. I love orangutans. Yeah, like all I the apes are going to have a high... Yeah, a high yeah it's going to be a high percentage. I mean, anyone who can, you know, kind of look at them and even their behaviour, like if you study... And again, I'm going back to that time when I spent six or eight weeks in the zoo. Like, yeah. yeah, spend time with them and, you know, yeah, see... Yeah, yeah. Like, we used to go to the zoo do, when I was in Ballyfermot. We used to go to the zoo to draw the animals and learn yeah. anatomy and yeah, all that so kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the orangutans used to fire their shit at people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I remember that. And they had they had two big Perspex glasses where you could stand out and view them and yeah. not get hit by the shit yeah, being thrown yeah, at you. Yeah. Yeah. They, they and every now and then some, some zoo hand came along and swept up the shit that they'd fired out <laughs> of their enclosure. Yeah, no, they had some other bad habits too. Zebrafish. Zebrafish DNA is 73% similar to us. Okay. What was it? Just you, zebrafish, though. I don't know. I found zebrafish and I thought, why, like, the why zebrafish? Why not? Had a why not? Similar well, we. Percentage, like. Everything that lives now lives on land crawled out of sea. Yeah. And yeah. whales actually went the other way. Yeah. They either came out and then fucked off back and said, I no, I'm not doing this. I never thought yeah, of it that way. Yeah, yeah, whales, dolphins, ma but, mammalian, yeah. mammalian sea life. Yeah, I don't have actually evolved on. Oh, well, I yeah. don't know why, but they did. They fucked yeah. off back to the sea because the land was shit. Yeah. What was it you were saying about invertebrates? Yeah. I, I'd imagine their similarity is less. Slugs. Right. 70% similar well, to humans. 70%. No. And I thought, is that the same for snails? Probably. It can't Probably. be, though, because one of them evolved without shell and the other evolved with a shell. Yeah. So there has to be some sort of percentage differential there. Yeah, yeah, sure enough. And did it? I, I didn't find it out. No, I didn't no, find no. it out. I don't know. It just, it was something I question marked and couldn't find an answer to. Yeah, obviously, it hasn't, again, obviously no. it hasn't 
attracted mm-hmm. enough attention that people want to go, why does that happen? Mm-hmm. And who's going to throw money at that? I'd like mm-hmm. to find out and I'd like to get tenure and find out why snails have shells and I, slugs don't. I'm going to go out on a limb here and take a stab in the dark. I'd imagine it has something to do with predators. I'd imagine it has something to do with environment. Yeah, that, you know, snails evolve perhaps in a predatory environment where they need a protection. Slugs probably had less. I don't know. Less need for kind of. I don't know. Maybe it's the fact that they live. They're subterranean, they're above mm. ground, they're below yeah. ground. If there's a scientist out there that wants to correct me on yeah. all of this no, shit, please do so. For me, but anyway, there you go. Trees are 50% similar in DNA to humans. Trees? Trees. So we share like half, half our DNA with trees. Yeah. That's mad. I d- and well, I don't know. But I, again, if you think about it, and this is something that I've often kind of contemplated on and looked, you know, when you're looking around the world, around you see the same patterns the same kind of structure all the time you look at the veins in a leaf and then look at your own wrist so many the way veins yeah yeah there, there's a there's a system you know, of and that there is literally a vascular system in a tree there's a vascular like, system yeah. yeah yeah so yeah it's just cabbages which would have and the, again, veins the veins on the leaf, and the vascular 45 percent similar yeah. dna <laughs> daffodil <laughs> so when somebody calls you a cabbage they're yeah, not all you wrong fucking cabbage yeah. you're not wrong <laughs> you're, not. you're not half right but you're not half you're nearly half yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> daffodils are 25 percent similar to us okay. in shared dna which is nuts as well words, words, and i keep that. saying this is nuts this is not nuts it's not nuts. you know it's we're all on the same planet we all evolve yeah. from the same exactly fucking, from the same, with same ingredients yeah yeah, yeah. And, I, and as I said, I mean, the, you know, the whole thing of patterns repeating and some will say yeah. that's kind of, you know, evidence of a divine creator or whatever. Uh, I I don't agree. I think it's it's evidence, as Dr. Ian Malcolm in Jurassic Park would say, life finding a way. Something that works yeah. and repeats. I, I had know? an argument with a guy. I used to work in, in a factory near here. Mm-hmm. And I had an argument one, one day with a guy and... He was he was very much a creationist mm. and I was very much evolutionist. Yeah. And it was the last day of shift when we had our disagreement on the origin of life and all that kind of crack. Yeah, yeah. And we didn't go into any detail. It was just shut the fuck up. <laughs> you shut the fuck up and all that kind of thing. And we went and four days on, four days off on shift. So I had four days off. And over those four days, I watched a life on earth thing right, that was on tv so it was yeah. david attenborough again yeah yeah um went back into work on the first day and he came back into work and we both wait until you i yeah, fucking yeah. i'll put you right i've been and a surgeon he said i was watching a documentary on tv and it was all of these you know the way you get the flamingos migrating across a salt flat in yeah. in the andes in yeah, south america yeah, or something yeah, like yeah, that yeah. and this this helicopter, because they had no drones at that stage, yeah. this helicopter pulled out and it was a couple of kilometres. I know the, I know the exact thousands, about, there's yeah, yeah. There's tens of thousands of flamingos flying off in one direction. And I looked at, at that and I went, how can you not think that's evolution? evolution yeah. And, he looked, and he looked at it and he and thought, said, how can, can you not, not think God? that's God? And, and yeah. he said it to me yeah. and I laughed and I just said, look, no one's going to win this argument. Yeah. So no, 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 believe it. That's it, it well, listen, that argument has raged on since... And will rage on well, since for religion many was invented, yeah. I suppose. Invented, um, yeah. yeah. Now, there's this. I love octopuses as well. I love octopi. And it is... Octopi. Octopuses. Octopi is Latin. An octopus comes from a Greek word. So I oct- stand oct- corrected. Octopuses or even octopodes, P-O-D-E-S, is more correct than okay. octopi. C- uh, cephalopod. <laughs> they are they are of the cephalopod family. Yeah. Cephalopods. Yeah, but yeah, it's yeah. octopuses. Yeah. Or it's a cephalopi. <laughs> uh, here we go. I couldn't find out how close we are. Related DNA-wise to octopuses. Okay. There's been loads of research done on octopus DNA. You couldn't find on the internet. I couldn't find a percentage of how close humans are to octopuses. And it might, maybe no one's that interested, or maybe it's so fucking close. That it makes no difference. 
that someone says, I'm not fucking going to say that. <laughs> it might be that close. I don't know, but Very maybe it is. But anyway, I did find this. Octopus DNA. Does there, in octopus DNA, there's a gene called a jumping gene. Okay. Okay. Now, I'd say it's the ACTG in that double helix thing that you're, yeah. you're picturing in your head. Yeah, yeah. It's not just a specific thing in there. It's a combination, right? Okay. So, so it's, it's called a, chunk a, a yeah. jumping gene and it pretty much copies and pastes itself into somewhere else that it might be needed. This is during reproduction, is it? I have no idea, but it's evident in the human genome and it's in octopus DNA. Okay, so we have jumping genes, genes as, as well. well then. Yeah. Okay. So that might be that might go some way to explaining their unique intelligence. The yeah, fact that I they're mean, they so say smart. that they're like as smart as the five year old child. In twenty twenty one, it was reported that a cuttlefish, which is another member of the cephalopod family, okay. passed an IQ test that was created to evaluate the intelligence of five year old children. Jesus. So it passed that's it. Nuts. And that's that's a test that's Colour and shape yeah. and what Orientate. fits in where, yes. you know, that kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, very, of course, yeah. It's very simple. Oh, I think I've seen that. Yeah. I think so I remember be... an octopus type thing putting shapes into slots. I definitely remember. That's an image. I've seen that and I've seen them That's an image that's in my head. release themselves from jars that they've been screwed into yeah. and get through smaller spaces. And, yeah. and it's not that and they can squeeze. And at the World Cup. Have and you seen no. that? Yeah, it's, it's yeah, garbage. It's ridiculous. But it's not that they squeeze themselves into these impossibly small places. It's that they investigate yeah, they're, they're whether curious. they can or not, and then they do. They're you know those, what I mean? Yeah. So, And I think it's if, if the opening that it's trying to get itself through is smaller than its eye, is smaller than its eye, it won't, it won't go. Okay. That could be it. And maybe that's, that's something that's, well... Their brains as well. Octopuses have technically eight brains that control each of their arms. Oh, okay. Yeah, eight so brains. It's, 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 I'm sure they've got one central structure. Right. But they do have an intelligence. Jeez, you really do like octopi, don't I you? I love octopuses. <laughs> octopi. <laughs> now, so back to DNA, and I want to wind up on these two little bits. If you printed a version of your DNA onto paper, it would take 262,000 pages to print out. Yeah. Or 175 large books. And that's a phone book. And I'm, you know, pretty so sure I'm pretty sure I read somewhere that if you laid A4 pages of your DNA end to end, it circumnavigates the globe at least I once. Did, I didn't see that. I wish I'd found it though. I of those 262,000 pages, only 500 would be unique to us. Yeah. So that's nuts. It's that's fucking crazy. That's, yeah. I was also talking to a friend of mine yesterday, and he was telling me that redheads need more anesthetic than people with different other hair colors: black, blonde, brown. Wow, cool. Because of their genes. That's because of the, because of the red hair, their fair skin, yeah. their genes. They have a lower pain tolerance. And okay. there, I read up on it because I was saying, that's fucking interesting. I'm going to say that in the podcast. Mm. And there have been scientific, some scientific uh, investigations into it, but it's been a very small sample source. So they haven't verified it. They haven't said, yeah, no. this is what we're going to go with. This is true. Yeah. And they haven't said, no, it's not. It's just a small sample size. Right. But he was telling me when he was eight years old and getting his wisdom teeth removed, at eight. Which is a very young age. Very my young, isn't it? my wisdom teeth didn't erupt until I was in my 40s. I got them like in my mid 20s, but they were so slow. Which is usually around the. Yeah, the but they were so slow and coming around. I have no idea whether, whether this is normal or commonplace, but they'd grow for a little bit and then they'd stop and the gum would grow back over them. No, mine. And have to cut again and again. Oh, mine erupted and like, said, We're fucking here and we're not yeah, going anywhere. No, no, mine just kept. They like, just kept growing and they were yeah. horrible. And it was painful, very painful. Yeah. But when he was eight, and his wisdom teeth had been had erupted and they needed to be removed because that would have been problematic. Mm -hmm. The dentist said to his man, you must have somebody with red hair in your family with the way that he's sucking up anaesthetic. Because he That's was shoveling anaesthetic into him and it was having no effect. 
And well, I have a little red head at home now who's going to be very surprised to hear that. I am so. very disappointed when they go together with them, Tito. Oh, God, yeah. Okay. So, might be something to remind them of, Rosie, that uh, you need extra anaesthetic when you're getting your wisdom teeth out. Sorry, Rosie. <laughs> this podcast was for you, and you're going to need lots of anaesthetic. 